Moving forward to smarter agents. And that is our goal with these. It's so fun to call it that, but the fact of the matter is we want to make you guys smarter. We all want to be smarter, right? Oh, yeah. So a lot of this, yeah, a lot of this is going to be a little blurry because it comes directly from uh, what we're doing in uh, our app files, right? Yep. Leah, you got app files up to share? I do. Oh. So right now we're going to do checklists. And of course, our checklists include even agent onboarding because we we did this in, in a format that uh, that just made sense like that to us. So as we went down through, this is the section we were just on, right, right here, okay. agent onboarding. But use the checklist, guys. This this is a simple thing. And you got a buyer's transaction. Pull this form up. Just make sure you've done it. What might I need? This is not something that I can tell you. Well, I could if we had a chance to talk every time, but these are things you guys should know. Um, you've studied, you're good at it. Do your client profile, right? Standard disclosure that it was what we were just, excuse me, looking at that, this, that uh, the FAR bar even requires. And, um, you know, what kind of things you're going to need to get people into contract, right? We need a pre approval letter. If, if they don't have one, can we show them properties? Of course we can. Yeah, but, well, we may be wasting time yeah. because somebody falls in love with a the house they can't afford. Yeah. And then the wife's mad at the husband and, or vice versa, whatever, it just to happen. Or somebody's single and just gets mad at the whole situation and uh, decides to wreck for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. It happens. The easiest way we can keep people calm is have these things done in an orderly fashion. But we need to be the ones that talk in this kind of a tone with the hey, this this is the process. You're skipping this point or trying to. If you do, uh, you're going to be frustrated. And I uh, encourage them. People are like, yeah, but it's only good for 30 days, right? And it's like, no, no, not really. Um, I've used ones that are uh, are 90 and 120 days old, and some agents don't care. Um, but we need to have that. And the fact of the matter is, yeah, we don't want them pulling your credit over and over and over again. Uh, that's a fact. But so if somebody catches on and goes, man, this thing's like six months old, what are you doing? It's like, yeah, you're right. We should probably update it. We've been looking for a long time. Bear with me. Yep. But at least they did the process then, right? Yep. So now it's time to get in a contract. You got to do it again. But it's not a pre-approval at that point. At that point, they're going for an approval. So anyway, all of the various things you may need. We're not trying to fill any of these things out today, guys, because I really want to blow through them and uh, just give you a good feel for all of these various things that are here. Sellers listing documents, same process, right? Just just go through it, identify it. If it's pre-78, we know what we need to do, right? So uh, these checklists are important. The, the fun part, God bless you. The fun part about those checklists is that they tie to um, everything that we're doing as we go further down. So we've gone through checklists. Um, we know our agent resources, all right? This is important too. How about just a basic budget? Uh, we, we just got this one in here because it's like we're talking to many younger people and it's not just younger people, people that just need a basic budget and don't know how to do it. Boom, there it is. Here, I'll click on it real quick. But, That's cool. um, it's, it's just a quickie budget. And this okay. is Dave Ramsey. I mean, we're not trying to claim credit for it from financial piece, but it's it works, okay? So uh, if you don't have one, do it yourself. I'm doing it again myself now. Uh, it's important to not just do one budget, right? We we do them uh, routinely as we go. County contact impose. Now we, we're looking at guides. We know all of these things, all these scripts. But what we really want to roll into today uh, is about... Oh, you got to go back to the next thing. I already forgot. All right, so in-house forms. Um, yeah, have a good show today. Okay. In-house forms. God bless you. These are important things to know. How about just contract deadlines? If we're not using that one, we're not doing ourselves any favors. These are not required to be processed in the MLS or anything like that. Uh, but it does clarify when you're talking with the other agents, even, hey, Here's what I see is was our effective date. Here, here's the end of your inspection period. Here's when we're anticipating this. Here's when we need to see escrow. 
uh, all of the various things we need. It's important to do. Standard disclosure addendum. The, these are our in-house forms. There's the one for the buyer. There's the one for the seller. We really don't have to look hard, right? All right, so in-house forms. We're rocking on purchase offers, right? These are all the various kinds of purchase offers we can use. Again, we're going to stumble along over here. <laughs> we're going to get there. Uh, so now we just put in If I guess so. Residential sales contracts, purchase offers. Here, here's a bunch of them. But here's the other thing. You know, when we're looking at these, we need to know that this this one uh, you have to fill in uh, and balance and run your numbers. This one it's automatic. Which do you prefer? Mm -hmm. I prefer the non-automatic because I like to write the word balance in uh, on the uh, total amount yeah. due because their auto balance isn't accurate because we don't know what their closing costs and what their total costs are gonna be. So I like the word balance. Same thing with, uh, with this one, does it the same way, automatic or non-automatic, automatic. Now let's talk about just the simple differences here. Um, residential as is contract. The big thing about this contract is um, it's the easiest way to get a buyer into contract that they can get out of. It's simple to get out of, right? Because you go down to the inspection portion and let's find that real quick. But you just go to the inspection portion of the contract and um, what you're gonna find is that based on their sole discretion, sole discretion, decided we don't like the color of the paint of the outside of the house whatever it may be. And when you break this contract, if somebody asks for a reason, it's based on the on the buyer's sole discretion. Sorry, man, just like our contract says. What didn't they like? Um, apparently something that was based on their sole discretion. Mm -hmm. Go to the contract, use the contract terms, okay? You use the contract language when, when we're doing these things. All right. But so, what, but what exactly? Well, right, I'm people will beg, and uh, we're still gonna do the same thing. Now, uh, the interesting thing is when, when we get into this again, um, that's easy to get out of. This one actually protects the seller more, but a lot of sellers think, no, I want as is. I don't want to have to fix something. Okay, you know, and this one is more work on us as agents because it truly does hold people in contract. Uh, they have repairs and they can request repairs. And we have addendums for those too. Use them. Use repair request addendums uh, and those remedy type things. Okay. But uh, bottom line is when it comes down to uh, how do I get out? What's the only way that they can really get out of uh, this contract easily? They go out and buy a car. They no longer qualify for the loan. Yeah, they, 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 they no longer finance, qualify yeah. for the loan. It's financial. They get their money back. Otherwise, yeah, guess what? They're in contract. Uh, it's, well, unless a seller is unwilling to do repairs. Okay, so again, I'm going to do these very quickly. And that, that was my goal for today was just to get everybody to get a feel for them. Yeah. And then, you know, same thing with when you get into purchase offers, you know that there are residential addendums. And this list goes on. I just grabbed a few. Uh, you need to pick and choose which ones are appropriate. Like Emil just had to use this one on one of his, right? Yeah. Almost all of us have to use this one. Sometimes you don't, like you didn't on yours, Emil. It's just interesting to see the differences, okay? And we need to know the differences in, in these things and what do we need. Where do we see all of these in, in a, a document that we have? We have five. Our checklist. checklist. That checklist you printed off before oh, yeah. you ever started, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so that's important review. And again, if we if we pop over to um, our app files and um, yeah, back to everything's under blank forms, which that's the only part of this that kind of confuses me personally. But if we say, why is it not liking the word addendums? Did I spell something wrong? No. Hmm. Well, we'll go there. They, they are. Okay. I just had to put in less. Sometimes, and that's the same with the MLS. Less, less is more. So, again, the residential addendums, guys, look at the list we have in here. I mean, mm -hmm. it goes on and on and on and on. 
what you don't want to do is double up. So it's really kind of silly to say that a property has to must appraise um, when it's uh, when it's not yeah when it's not an all cash transaction. Being not an all trans cash transaction means it has to finance, which means it has to appraise. If it doesn't appraise, um, one of two things happens. You either get the price, well, three things can happen. You either get the price reduced to the appraised value and the seller throws up that helps get this thing done. They still want to sell it and uh, and they sell it. Second option, the deal blows up. Hate that option. Third option, you negotiate. Gee, what are we? We're negotiators. So we, were, we negotiate, we renegotiate uh, the purchase price and the buyer can bring more money to the closing table. Some lenders won't let you. So you need you need to know the differences, okay? So back to this, you understand these things, right? And yes. I know I'm, I know I'm moving quick with these, but the whole idea is an overview. Yeah. How about buyer commission agreement? Heck yeah. If if you're going in a market where uh, sellers are paying one percent, why not ask your buyer? You know I work awfully hard for you, and uh, and typically I'm free, but um, except for so. Fee our office charges for a transaction fee of two ninety five, but you know if if somebody only wants to pay me two percent or one percent, don't you think I'm worth more than that? I work. I'm going to work awfully hard for you. I'd appreciate it if you'd make up the difference of maybe just one percent, uh, if if it's underneath the standard three percent market value. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. It protects you, and uh, and a lot of people will sign that if you've been working with them for a while. They'll go, oh yeah, of course. And uh, this may not be something you want to ask out of the starting gates, but when you're showing the properties that, you know, what if they want to see short sales? You get a commission agreement. Mm -hmm. Okay. They want to see a bank owned or an REM. Get a commission agreement. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't pay except for a minimal fee. Yeah. Okay. And in short sale, well, let's face it, the, the typical thing there is the bank negotiates our rates down with the listing agent. And then the listing agent has written into their contracts or every, every listing agreement uh, that they're posting on the MLS or should is that uh, any commission reduction uh, required by the bank will be split evenly between buying and selling agent. Okay, so that's the way it works. So uh, these these are important to know. Everything from your disbursement authorization form. This is uh, meaning that uh, you know you you got into a deal and you need me to to uh, cut a check at closing. Uh, it's great. I love doing these. You get paid at closing. Why wouldn't you instead of bringing it back here and uh, waiting for me to get a check cut for you? Don't do it. Go do it. Do a DA. So there's all of these various things that you can do again, and these forms are important. Um, everything from loyalty agreement, but use your checklists and they'll tell you which ones to use. But these forms are great because even your open house sign in. And these again are things that uh, people forget to look for. But when we go into our app files, gee, they're all going to be right here. You know, again, we went to uh, to open house sign in earlier, and it's like boom, there it is. It's handy. And you know what? If you guys want to modify and put your picture on it, feel free. Uh, doesn't matter to me. This is just simply uh, to save you time while you're working and doing a nice job. And it's all professionally done. I, I think they really look nice. So. We are at a break. Break. Let's let's rock on. Unless you guys, anybody in your restroom, get a cup of coffee. Yeah. Okay, let's press on. But you know, when we're doing the listing agreement reviews, uh, I think that it's important to know people's motivation. Right? Doesn't say that anywhere in any of this stuff. The, the, this is just. Sales 101. What is somebody's motivation for selling that property? Once you know that motivation, you know how to encourage and help them. Yeah. Same thing with a buyer. What's their motivation for buying this listing? Once you know, every time you talk to that buyer's agent, look, I know that, that your buyers just can't wait to get down here by, by their grandkids and grandbabies. I look forward to helping them do that. Um, this is so exciting, isn't it? Every time. The ne next time, man, how are your sellers or your buyers doing? Man, it's a long way for them to see the kids, isn't it? They're going to get there. It's not, it's coming. 
you know, with a with a seller. Reverse, right? I know you really want to get to uh, uh, up to back up to the Carolinas or Michigan or wherever. Name that spot where their kids are, you know, because you've got app files and you're, you put it in there, right? Um, so you're not struggling to think of, darn it, where are they moving? No, you've got it now. That's why app files is so nice. It's going to go, oh yeah, that's where they want to go. And that was their motivation. I put it in there ahead of time because I want to do my job well. This is easy, you know? And, uh, you know, and, and your dog's going to be so much happier there. That long haired dog is going to love that cooler weather, whatever it may be, help them. So when we look at these, this is an important portion here. Uh, because these, hello, these are all different. And with that in mind, let's go to app files and let's go to listing agreements. What if you use this one? You accidentally grab the, well, maybe, maybe it's the right one for you. Exclusive brokerage listing agreement. Is this an exclusive right to sell? No. So uh, it's one of those deals where, you know, seller reserves, read this, seller reserves the right to sell the property directly to a buyer without the assistance of any real estate licensee. And if successful, does not owe the broker a commission. That's the huge part of this one that should make all of us throw up. Here's the beautiful part about this one. You're working with a builder. Mm -hmm. they want to have the right to just do it themselves too okay but can i market your property and if we do it can we do it can, would you be willing to do it this way if you're not doing an exclusive right to sell mm -hmm. uh i could see where this would be very effective wouldn't you because now you can sell it or they can sell it mm -hmm. okay and um yeah you you could try to get to be their exclusive agent well, but if they're not using an agent and they actually, it's a smaller builder and they do it on their own, more power to them. Okay. Huh. So there are, are ways of using this one, but um, let's just go back to, did it come up? <laughs> List. Okay. Um, next one's a commercial property. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, they're different. And again, we could cover how all these things are done. Nice thing about if you get a commercial listing, um, the building is what you're allowed to sell. The business, uh, you are not. That's a separate license, okay? Uh, or And it's a separate training. Don't try to do something that you're not trained to do. Um, and typically, again, um, the people even that want you to sell their business may not own the building. Okay, we want. I want the buildings. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm after to sell. Mm -hmm. All right. So important again to remember the difference of uh, of what we're doing. And uh, how about non rep? Why Why would we not want to represent? And here's why. Say um, we're we're looking into another part of our business being um, a virtual agent even which is where um, people don't really want to work with an agent or they don't think they do. So uh, we might meet with them one time. If once, but we should see the property. But we don't have to. Because in reality, if they want to send us the photos, they want to take all the calls, everything, that's where non-rep comes into play. And you see them in the MLS. Uh, you know, brokers charge like four or 500 bucks to put it in the MLS. And... Um, Send me the contract when you guys agree. Mm -hmm. You're not doing it's really to me, it's a sad position to be in for an agent. Yeah. But for us as a business, we're thinking that it may be a good way to show them what they don't want to do yeah. and use that to roll into full rep yeah. uh, or full representation, which is what I believe we did. Huh. So single agent. Again, single agent is uh, obedient, right? Yeah. yeah. Complete obedience, and uh, you know, all, all of us know that we need to be ethical, uh, caring. We need to account for all funds. We need to do the things we need to do. But this one again, the big difference is obedience. If they tell you something, um, you either have to do it, or you can fire them too if they want you to do something unethical. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't tell them that the roof's leaked over there, and it's and uh, I patched it with 
with rubber inside the ceiling and it's going to leak, but then it goes out into the soffit and nobody will know. No, we're not going to cover up facts like that. Uh, but some people will ask, and that's about the time when my suggestion would be fire them. They, they can't just fire us. We can fire them too. It's a two-way street. A lot of people don't understand that. Um, transaction broker. What's the difference in being a transaction broker? You can represent both sides. Uh, it says it in the word. And this is why a lot of a lot of folks kind of initially, I think we're gagging on this because the fact of the matter is we're working for the deal. Yep. Doesn't mean we're going to be dishonest. Doesn't mean we're going to misrepresent anything or anybody. We're simply working to get a transaction completed, which means we really are hoping to see a win-win. Yep. Uh, we still have agents out there that are like, the only way to negotiate is to win. I think the win is the seller sells the house, the buyer gets the house. Yeah. That's the win. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's, that's your goal, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. But we do have sharks that swim in the pool. So uh, that's why we are all known as transaction brokers in the state of Florida, unless otherwise uh, in writing stated. Okay. And at that point, if you are a single agent and you do get to represent the, the uh, buyer as well, you would have to transition into a transaction broker, right? Okay, how about a limited service agreement? That, in my opinion, is pretty much the same thing as a non-rep. Limited service is where you really don't do anything. Um, <laughs> it's, just, it's pathetic. It's vacant <laughs> land listing agreement, it's a little different too. Here's the thing I don't think a lot of people realize about vacant land. You can charge more. Um, Typically, they don't. It's it's one of those things where uh, it's it's a lower dollar thing that you're dealing with, and I've seen people charge as much as ten percent to list a uh, piece of vacant land. That's yeah, okay. You sure, you can. Huh? Hey, you can do that on a regular listing too, but it's uh, hard to do. But I do know people that get seven percent because of their marketing, and they show you know right out of the starting gates. I spent a thousand bucks in my and uh, everything that we're doing in your imagery, your matter reports, your video tours. Um, my photographer is absolutely the best there is in this area. And that's who you want to work with because that's who I want to work with. You know, where that's who I want to work with. I really think that's who you should work with too. Right. right? So those are options you can do. Um, and now back to smarter agent. Hopefully I'm not taking too long. I think I'm cranking. <laughs> you know, I can never tell because I get wrapped up in things when we're doing this because it excites me. I love what we do. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Sales contract forms, right? Yeah, right back over here because you're going to see 1031s right there. Huh. Uh, and uh, that's an important one to know um, because, well, let's start with a lot of people, um, even investors don't really know about it and they're afraid of it. And there's it's silly to not know about this. And uh, it's, it's a great way to, again, protect your funds. You can use pre-tax dollars um, to um, expand yourself. So in other words, you sell this house for, uh, or you buy this house for 125, you sell it for 200, you're now not paying taxes on that 70 or 75,000 that you earned because, and they think you earned, even though you invested money in it to make that money. So uh, right, right out of starting gates, you sell it in six months, you're not paying the capital gains or anything on it. It just goes right back into, into the pocket or into the pool. Now you have 200,000, to work with, and you buy this house for two twenty-five because you had some other money, and now that house is worth three hundred thousand when you sell it. You understand why you can keep that money and keep growing it, but then when again you get taxed in, in the end um, when you either can't get a property purchased and or you take the money out. Okay, so it's it's not um, a very liquid thing by any means. Real estate's not liquid. Um, it's very, it's a little more challenging to liquidate than people think. Great investment, in my opinion, but not a liquid deal. So let's go to F files. I thought it was going to go right to listing forms down here. It does not. So I just have to say forms. Uh, sales contract forms. Thank you. Might do less is more. Yeah, it's there. Why yeah, won't let me? Why it has anything? Doesn't have anything else. But interesting. Maybe just do sales. 
And this is the way we use this system, by the way. We hunt. And if it messes with us, I'm going to go. There's the sales contracts we just reviewed. There you go. Sales contract forms. I guess I should have put something like an addendum, but it wouldn't have pulled all these then. So um, again, when we're looking at these guys, we have the 1031s not here. No, no, no. Let's see which one was I in. Sales contract form. No, it's because you're typing contract and contracts not in the. There you go. Exchange. It's it's all in what we say. So let's do this. Please let me do something different here, but I'm in the wrong area. Okay. Let's blow this away completely because it's starting to frustrate me. And then <laughs> let's just go to scroll down the a little whole scroll. scroll. And this is the way I typically do it anyway. Um, Keep going. So we want the sales contract forms. And what we're looking for is the ones that start with 1031. Keep going. Yeah, we only have a few items in here that we built over the years. Keep going. With the help Keep going of going closer. Keep with going. the help of Mark. There you go. Okay. Oh, I should have put far. All right. Anyway, 1031 exchange. I think this this is just a beautiful thing. And that's why I've touched on it a little bit. But guess how much data there is on this? That's it. Wow. Uh, because it's simply a matter of it's an exchange. Like kind property. Like kind property. Doesn't mean you can sell a house and buy a boat. Mm -hmm. Can I sell a house and buy a commercial building? Yes. Yes. Can I sell a house and buy a piece of land? Yes. It's still considered residential real estate yep. or, or real estate. Okay. So like kind here is real estate. And um, if that makes sense, then it makes sense. Okay. And, uh, and it's good stuff. Of course, you know what I did is I clicked on the one. Yep, and now you gotta type in. Let's see if it does this. It does not. No, it hates me. Yeah. But that's okay because we know we're going to go yeah, way back down here. Okay, so this is just a blank addendum to a contract. Don't practice law. A lot of agents take this as an opportunity to spell things out perfectly, exactly the way it would sound if they were an attorney. <clears throat> we're not attorneys. Okay. What we could write in here is washer and dryer to be included in contract. Or in set. That's okay. Um, addendum to contract. We forgot to mention we want all the pool equipment. Yeah. I just filled this out uh, yesterday for Joe yeah. Lindsay. We put the uh, seller and buyer agreed to modify the Sales price to 350 and modify. So, so well, hopefully, you didn't use the uh, just is that just the addendum? I think that would be a listing modification. Let's show that, see the difference. You would not put that on this one. This is just a blank form. For what you're talking about, that's a listing modification form. Or it's a wait a minute, you don't have the listing. This is a purchase. It's a purchase. Yeah, okay. Because it didn't, it didn't appraise more than the stinking price. Understood. Mida. Mm -hmm. Mida. We have that. This, yeah, so like, uh, this is the one you would one use you if it was the listing. Got it. And um, you were making modifications to the listing, right? But you're not the listing agent. You're, you're, right. you're working a purchase. So that's different. Okay. Because it's not, not good. So just important to know what to look for. And again, if you're not using that form every day, mm -hmm. you go, yeah, I don't know. But what's the problem with just coming over here and going, you know, I'm not sure where it is. I know I've seen something like that. And just take your time and read down through this. It wouldn't take you that long. Well, it might take a little while, but not terribly long. Okay. So th those are just important things to know. And um, right now we were, ooh, where did I go? There we go. 
Um, so I agree, Chris, that would be the one I would have used to. And then under contract for sales and purchase of a cooperative, uh, this is typically, again, where the it's not fee simple. So they don't own the land under it, right? It's part of a co-op. And um, co-ops aren't a problem. Uh, typically going to be seen with uh, mobile homes. Um, oftentimes they don't own the land under them and they're paying uh, land rent fees. Land rent fee is a co-op, right? Yep. I, I believe that's right. I, mean, I need to verify a lot of things too. That's, what, that's my understanding. Uh, then under vacant land contract. These are just the uh, ways you can do things. Appraisal gap addendum. Important to know if you if your buyer really wants the property but doesn't want to offer them a lot more than their asking price and uh, but is willing to go up ten grand, it can come up in increments. We'll, we'll go up, um, you know, thousand bucks. We'd be willing to go a thousand bucks. Yep. Auction addendum. Not a bad method of marketing. You'll see agents that use auction methods, and uh, doesn't mean you can't have a reserve number. But you can get people stoked up thinking it's truly an auction. What does that mean, a reserve number? In other words, I'm going to sell my car, but it's not going to sell for less than this, or I'm not going to sell it. Got it. Okay. Um, they mostly do it in town for you. They are. Yeah. Well, and I know people here that do it too. Yeah, and it's, it's, and again, it's it's not it's not a bad marketing technique or tool. It just depends on on how you want to market. The ones I've seen on are the ones that. Maybe we're gutted or needed a little bit more work or repair. There are agents that use it on a standard sale. Uh, it's just their method. And uh, they want to be unique. And uh, so they use that. Interesting. Yeah. How about uh, authorization to furnish uh, your uh, truth and lending uh, for your buyers in the trip? Okay. So in other words, um, this is to be able to show it to others. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um Typically, that's not something that I'm wanting to show to people. Mm -hmm. So I'm not asking that. Um, so that's different. Now, in Ulta, sure. But that's the closing statement. And I hate it when they only show me my side. And here's why. I don't just go and look at my commission. Most agents, I think, hey, great, I got a closing statement. Yep, they got my commission, right? Looks good to me. Mm -hmm. That's not representing your buyer or seller well. No, run the tax numbers. Make make sure that they divided them properly. Are there fees that they're charging what they said they would, would charge? Compared against the truth and lending statement with the lender even. Hey, this is what you guys said. Can't you adjust this down so my buyer's not having to come out of pocket so high? Mm -hmm. oh, we can't. Come on. Yes, you know, you can. You have the authorization. You have the right to ask your manager. And oftentimes they'll come back with a, well, he wouldn't let me, but I can kick in. Okay, thanks. Okay, and, and review those statements. How about uh, the buyer's disclosure statement? That's interesting. Let's look at that. I don't even know what this is. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. I have never used this form, guys. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it apparently is for um, somebody who is any of these things. And um, then you're just disclosing that they have the the ability to evaluate. I don't know why. This is an interesting one. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder, and this is obviously a state form that we rolled into know. ours. What is the D? Can you but, down the D? But what's the advantage of using this? This would revise nine of twenty-two. Nine. So something worth reading, and uh, it's kind of interesting because uh, I don't know. This is buyer and seller. I guess you're going to provide who your lending institution is, mm -hmm. everything about them. You're going to have done that with the pre-approval letter. Say it looks more have like you been pre qual Why not just yeah? Why not just use a pre-qual letter? Yeah. Um, but apparently, you can do it either way. That's interesting to me. So, sorry, guys, didn't didn't know what that one was. But I think that's interesting. I'm going to read it later. We're not in this today to read through these things, or we'll never get through them all. Mm -hmm. um, so we're still in our forms section here. Um, but again, the repairs and requests, the remedies. Um, 
you can just put this in an email. Yep. Not the best idea. I use this form and I put it in an email and I attach this and I ask for the seller to sign it. If the seller doesn't sign it, there, there's no place on, I'm going to click here. There's no place on this for the seller to sign, which is kind of aggravating. It's the buyer. Okay. But uh, what I'll do is I'll ask, and, and I can even put a note right here at the bottom to have the seller sign it, because here's what we're asking. And um, seller can, you know, I can see a seller going, yeah, we got it, but we're not doing it after the period's up. <clears throat> so things to consider, but I would use that and I would put it in an email and I would spell out everything you're calling out here in the email. Okay, so it's just a, it's just another way of saying, hey, you know, uh, guess what? There's actually a legal form for this. And other agents will go, dang, I didn't like me with that other form. I didn't even know there was one for that. And uh, it makes you look that much more professional, right? The more we use the legal forms, the more professional we look. All right. So we've gone through all of these. Buyers walk through. I think that's very important as well. Their reinspection. Get them to sign off on that because uh, they can't. Well, they can't. But. Typically, they're not going to be able to come back to you and say, hey, this was messed up, this was messed up, and you you can simply go, and by the way, this was your personal inspection. You just said it was acceptable to you. How can I help you? And then roll right into my, my line is, well, how can I help you? Well, the sewers are backing up. Okay, well, let's maybe talk to a plumber and see what we can do about that. The seller didn't disclose it. They lied to me. Okay, um, so then you're asking, uh, you want me to ask them to help you with this now that you already own the house and you have for six months? Something may have changed. An inspection's only good for the day the inspection was done because mm -hmm. things change. Um, and, you know, again, if somebody really wants to sue somebody, they can. But uh, that's why these forms are important. Mm -hmm. Protect yourself. Okay. Same thing with a CDD counteroffer form. You know, there's actually a form for a counteroffer. You can use that form or you can make it yourself by writing it right on the face of your contract. Yeah, that's, um, that's interesting when I saw so that. There, there's other ways of doing each of these things. Not a bad form to use, but uh, personally, I, I write it right on the face of the contract. Okay, you can also do both, which is nice. Um, you know, flood insurance notices. There's just so many different forms that we have that are important to remember. You know, if, if you're in a home that you know has mold in it, why would you not give the buyer a mold inspection again? Mm -hmm. it, it would be kind of crazy not to, because again, everything we do, if we consider the fact that we're going to be in front of the magistrate or a court, and, um, and even if it's a court of our peers um, with our, our association or something, we need to be able, be able to present things well. Look, I did this, I did this, I, I followed all of these things. Is there something more I should have done? I love leading with that and watching people go, nope. Of course, I've been in those proceedings where they're like, Ken, stop. We, we know your agent didn't uh, didn't do this or that. And it's like, okay. But so in other words, if you guys go, I go with you. And uh, make me look good, please. We've trained well. And here's, here's exactly what they did and everything they did uh, was correct. And uh, if there's anything incorrect here, it was uh, it was not negligence uh, by any means because negligence is not a defense. And then you are open. And uh, that's the scary thing about negligence. Negligence in real estate leaves you totally open to being sued personally. Mm. Ouch. Well, I would assume you guys remember that from uh, the license training even. Mm -hmm. Don't be negligent. Do your job. Same thing with what, what if there's a septic system and you tell them it's public sewer? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what it said on the MLS. Okay, now, now at least you've got some defense. But nobody checked with the county on any of this stuff. Nobody walked the property. Mm -hmm. You know, septic system. In, in Florida, yeah. there's a home. Yeah, and uh, that would make me go, is there an abandoned septic system? Mm -hmm. I've had people go, oh, crap, it is on septic. Okay, mm -hmm. being a seller. Seller didn't even know. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, okay, so we do our job. Well, let's go here again, too. Uh, and uh, these aren't going to be in these forms. 
there's an interstate being built. It's going to come right through their backyard. The trees are all coming down. You know that you don't tell them. Is that a problem? Yes. Yes. Heck yeah. Well, it's our job to also know what's going on in the communities around us. What about 44th blowing through across the river? You sell somebody the, the waterfront on the river and they're looking at the bridge. That's not cool. And that is a, a legal no-no, okay? So we need to know. We need to look at what's going on in our communities within reason. Yeah, but if it's public knowledge, you can ask a, ask a Google or whatever. You can also just call the, call the county well, and say, hey, anything going on around this property I need to know about. How about sex offender disclosure? Huh. Important to know. And uh, for me, of course, that's also called out in our uh, brokerage disclosure. But if if it's known, yeah. How about if the buyer is a sex offender? Not illegal to sell them a house. Now, typically, they do need to notify everybody within a certain radius of them. Yep, uh, that they are. So important things to know once again, right, guys? All right, let's bounce back out to smarter agent training. The, the sales contract forms go on and on and on like we just discussed, right? Important to know. What's a backup contract? Uh, backup contract. Right. But a lot of people don't get it. They think, oh, it's a backup contract. I'll just hold that. No, it would need to be executed and held because if that falls apart, this one's in line. How does that help a seller? If their first deal falls apart, they have only the or right, or this one's twenty thousand dollars more. It's backup. This buyer has an as-is contract, and they want repairs to be done. You can say no, and yeah, bye bye. We're going with the backup. Hmm. And where did you put that one backup contract? Accepted, or you you put it on the listing? Like how, how you that you'll accept a backup contract. Do you want backup contracts? Say yes. That you put it on the because it looks like I just you don't have to put it. There's a little checkbox. Mm -hmm. I believe on the last page. There's a checkbox. I believe we'll need it and we need to update them. Nah, you're not in contract. No, but I want to ask you like, do you put it backup contract? When you accept a contract, you, right. when, when you go to the, not when, the time of the when you go to pending, will you accept a backup? Yes. Oh, yeah. On the time yeah. of the yeah. contract, right. not on the time of the listing. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't need a backup contract when you don't have a contract. Um. Okay. So important things to remember. Here we've talked about this, and I've talked about this. So I'm going to talk about it some more, guys. Excluding from the MLS. It's an issue with clear cooperation that's strongly called out in, I believe, Section 8 of the Florida Code for what we do. It's an issue. Where they've made this harder on us now is the coming soon that we all love. We're loved. I, I think I threw away my signs uh, for that even because it's just a waiting to be sued. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> being sued. So easiest way to avoid being sued, do things right, follow the law. And on that one, there's another agent right now. Um, and I'll, I'll put this on our recording even in the inlets on, um, let's see, I have a listing on Shark and they, uh, they are two streets up. <laughs> and that uh, listing says coming soon. It's been out there for two or three days. Is that wrong? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Within one day of marketing to the public, it has to be in the MLS. Unless you have this uh, exclusion done and uh, that it is submitted to the MLS. Oh, yes. There's a spot. There's a spot to file the form, which, again, uh, has been interesting because that part uh, Joey helped me with it. I mean, I love it when our agents are paying attention to and can come and say, whoa, wait a minute, look, there's a spot for that. I took this class. And it's like, thank you. I can't take every class. I try. I, I want to be in the know on all this stuff. So 
I appreciate it when you guys kick in on these things, okay? Important to know. So um, bottom line is don't, don't get yourself in trouble with this, all right? But these forms are available on our site too, okay? Or in app files. So last slide for the day. This is so important, I think, for all of us to know. Who am I today because of the choices I made yesterday? That's our business, guys. <laughs> it really is. Our business is truly reflected in the future of what we're doing today. What we do today affects our future income 60 to 90 days or more out. Mm -hmm. And momentum is so important. When the sun is shining on your work, thank the Lord and press on. And I guarantee, uh, I just guarantee completely that a break is going to come organically. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do anything to get a break. But what I will tell you is if you're busy and you take a break, you're breaking the momentum for yourself. Mm -hmm.